Welcome back to the Balance Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, then welcome. This is a show where we talk about everything from spirituality and shamanism, Reiki, Kundalini, channeling, mediumship, all that awesome spiritual stuff and make it a little more tangible, a little more modern, something that you can potentially relate to or learn about at the very least. And on the flip side, we talk about other, a little bit more standard stuff like nutrition, wellness, yoga, fitness, all that good stuff as well. So if you're here, that is because I genuinely believe that you are meant to be here. Your path brought you here for one reason or another, and I'm so happy about it. So whether a friend told you about this show, whether you've been following my blog for a long time, whether you have no idea who I am and you typed Shaman Durek into the search bar of your iTunes podcast and you wound up here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. This is a really special episode. We recorded this live last night. It's only the second live show I've ever done and the first that I've ever done in Los Angeles, which is pretty exciting. I'm doing my second in a couple days with the Almost 30 podcast. So by the time you hear this, it will have already passed or else I would invite you. But hopefully, if you live in LA, you knew about it and were able to make it if you wanted to. So last night's live podcast recording, yoga class, and shamanic workshop was really special. We did it at Aloe Yoga at The Grove, and it's a beautiful space. We had the room packed with some amazing women and... Justin, Brittany from Elevate the Globe's husband. He was he was our dude that made it out to flow with us and learn shamanic techniques. And I just think that's so cool. I love that Shaman Durek appeals to men and women, people from all walks of life, from so many different countries, from all over the world. And last night was incredibly special because our attendees got to come up and ask questions into the microphone and have him share his wisdom and his ancestral knowledge and channeling with all of us. I had the opportunity to see what was happening in the room while he was leading people through this shamanic workshop, shamanic teachings that he shares. And so many incredible things were happening. People were convulsing and crying and laughing hysterically, orgasming. People were having real powerful experiences. And it was such an honor to be in the presence and be able to witness all of that. And I only realized about halfway through that I could have been participating and I probably should have because I don't like to miss any magic with him ever. But being able to see that firsthand for the first time other than experience it was really special and I'm really, really glad I got to do that. So the structure of today's episode is a little different than what you might be used to because it was live and we had two microphones with us. So I was sharing my microphone with all of our attendees who were asking questions. So I'm mostly silent throughout this episode, just taking in everything Shaman Durek was sharing. The only thing I was really doing was introducing many of the people who came to ask questions because many of them are my close friends, family friends, fellow podcasters, all sorts of people who came. So... I hope you enjoy and I firmly believe that everyone who was there last night was there for such a strong reason and one of those reasons was that the questions that they had for Shaman Durek, I believe, are going to resonate with each and every one of you because their questions resonated with me and all of us are on different life paths, different stages of our journey, but everything they shared and asked was something that I could relate to and something that I could really walk away with major nuggets of inspiration from what Shaman Durek said. I think this whole episode is 
pretty much just soundbite after soundbite after soundbite after soundbite of magnificent, inspiring information. I'm also extremely happy because Shaman Durek is starting a podcast in the coming months. So keep an eye out for that. He is one of my just most incredible teachers and also one of my dearest friends. And we've gotten very close very quickly. Oh my goodness. I just had a plant tip over into my lap, story of my life. Does anybody else feel this way after daylight savings that things are just kind of like tipping over and not really going your way? Uh Um, Just trying to prop that back up. There we go. So you're going to enjoy this episode. I hope and believe it's super amazing. He's fantastic. And before we dive into the episode... I want to thank our sponsor for today's show, Everly Well. So Everly Well, this is the first time you've heard me talk about Everly Well, but it's not new in my life. I've actually been going back and forth with the brand for about four months now, if that gives you any indication of how quickly I move with certain things and much too many people's dismay. I do things based off of intuition. So when I connect with a new brand sponsor for the show or for my blog or for anything else, it takes me a long time to to move and create action because I have to familiarize myself with the company, with the people behind the company. I have to use it in my own life for a while. I have to just take some time for my intuition to spark and be like, yes, Today is the day that we are sharing about Everly Well. And that's what happened today. So I'm I'm genuinely extremely excited to share with you about Everly Well. Everly Well Health is a modern lab testing kit that can be done in the comfort of your own home to figure out it tests your sensitivity to 96 different foods, everything from gluten to cheese to shellfish and everything in between, 96 different foods. And you would be shocked, you guys, about the things that you might be sensitive to or might be inflammatory to your system. In my experience, I have really been the kind of person who will eat the same thing over and over again every day because it's comfortable to the point where I give myself a sensitivity. So Everly Well is really important to me because I think it gives us the power to take our health into our own hands. And who doesn't want to do that? I mean, that's really important, really awesome. And I went back and forth with Everly Well for a while because of course, the test that they, the um, kit that they send is extremely easy to use, very user friendly. You don't have to go through the painful process of going to a traditional lab, receiving black and white results that are difficult to understand, all of that stuff. So they just send you a kit that has little lancets that you can prick your finger with. And I think I'm probably the only person in history to have broken the lancets that I used because I have a lot of friends who use them really well. Like Ashley, my photographer, and many others. When I ask them about this, they're like, what do you mean? How did you break your lancets? That's crazy. So Everly Well sent me some new ones and I'm now waiting for my results. So as much as I wish I could share my results with you, you can find them in a future podcast episode and also in my Instagram stories in just a couple days because you only have to wait five days to get your results from Everly Well. So like I said, the process is super easy. You get the kit shipped directly to your door. You collect three small drops of blood on a blood spot card, and then you send the sample back to the Everly Well lab and receive your online results in just a few days. So who is this good for, you might ask? If you're experiencing a sensitive stomach, acne, headaches, fatigue, that's just a small list of many things, then this test may help you find if there's a specific food causing what you're going through. So I'm especially excited too, because March is a month where Everly Well is doing a big women's health campaign where they will be donating 10% of women's health sales to three incredible charities. So that's a company that I can stand behind and support in so many ways. And I know that you guys will be so excited about it too. 
So to check them out, go to everlywell.com. That is E-V-E-R-L-Y. W-E-L-L dot com. Check out all their stuff. They have food sensitivity tests, thyroid tests, metabolism tests, vitamin D and inflammation tests, fertility. The list goes on. So, so many different things that you could be struggling with. You have right here at your fingertips that you can do in the comfort of your own home. So from one highly inflamed food sensitive girl to another human on the other side of the earbud, just check it out, Everly Well. I think you'll love it. And without further ado, let's dive into this episode with Shaman Durek and so many of you incredible souls that made it out to our live Q&A. Hello, hello, hello. We're just going to dive right into it. Feel free to come up with any questions at any time. But to everybody listening at home who's not here in this amazing room at Aloe Yoga with us, we just did a yoga and shaman workshop. We taught a little yoga flow. Shaman Direct brought these amazing humans through. What would you call it that you just did? Uh, Opening up your natural powers. Yeah, pretty much magic. I just watched all these beautiful people sitting in front of me have a very transformative experience, I would say. But you guys can come up and tell me yourself, especially those of you who were laughing hysterically and crying, and I was doing both too. So thank you, everyone sitting in front of me for being here. Thank you, everyone listening for listening. And... Should we just have you guys start with some questions? Would you guys like that? Yeah. Who has who has a first question? Come up. So we'll have you introduce yourself into the microphone. Ask your question. It can be for either of us, but I feel like, you know, he, he, he has so much knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Devin. I'm not going to lie. My question's for a shaman trick. So I've been seeing 444... Oh, yeah, yes, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, on license plates. I look at the phone always then, phone numbers, like random numbers on trash cans, like literally everywhere. And so just trying to So 444, it out. basically, if you're seeing that number, it means that it's time for restructuring. So it's a restructuring. It's about restructuring, rebuilding, and re, um, acknowledging like where your energy has been, where it's been devoted to, and about shifting out of that space. And it's also not putting, it's also um, about removing worry or fear from your space about in this process of restructuring. So not being hard on yourself, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's... Um, the best way I can say it is like the lighthearted uh, movement, right? So it's like coming from this lighthearted movement and not getting caught up in like, I have to do this, I have to do this. If I don't do this, this thing's not going to happen. But more into like, I choose to do it because it makes me happy. I choose to do this. And what I don't choose to do, I'm just going to remove out of my life. And so this, the restructuring phase is about honesty. The restructuring phase is about integrity for yourself. And the restructuring phase is about you recognizing the principles of what works for your life from the authentic nature versus you doing things because you think you're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a follow-up? Because I had two questions, but I didn't know which one. That's fine. But it kind of ties into that because I'm, te- you know, I'm more prone to worry and anxiety and stuff, but I feel like I can also be rather intuitive. So I'm looking for help discerning between anxiety, what's anxiety and just fear-based versus what is... Well, let's Actually, take a look my at your, Let's look at your file for a second. Yeah, is that okay? Is it okay if I look at your yeah, file? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so right here, um, anxiety is coming on because you're putting pressure on yourself. And let me just look at your thought process here. Um, your thought process is it's not enough. So what's happening is you're consciously going, it's not enough. You're looking for it not being enough. You're not seeing the, the progress that, you're, that you want to see in the way you want to see it. So what's happening, hold on, let me just take a look at your quaternary files. Oh, here it is right here. So this is father stuff. So this is coming from okay. father and this is coming from, I have to have a strong structure and this is like a false concept for you. So it doesn't actually support you. So what's happening here, it's, let me just look at it now. Uh-huh. So right here, it says that you are having to come into this space 
of realizing that the pressure you put on yourself is not even your pressure. It's the pressure you feel that other people are looking at you and expecting things of you. So the anxiety is actually coming from the lateral left side quadrant of your body, which is your lower hip, upper abdominal area on your left side of your um, upper lungs. Hold on, just look at your other regions. Upper neck, shoulder, right side, upper trapezius, upper sternocleidomastoid. Frequency energies in your body. Um, frequency energies are rise and fall in emotions. That means a slight form of depression, okay? That means that you have to not take on other people's stuff. It's very important. Uh, let's take a look at your, your primary energies, current codes, frequency codes. Okay, okay. So the ancestors are saying that in order for you to actually move through this, you're going to have to come into a place where the truth is going to be uncomfortable for you, mm -hmm. right? So it means like, I'm not concerned if I'm creating conflict by being truthful, but it is just about preloading the conversation before you have it, which is because I care about you, because I appreciate you, because I know you're powerful and you're wise, you're going to be able to understand what I'm about to say, and then you drop the bomb. Because the thing is, is that your biggest lesson, and it shows here in your files, the way that the answers are showing to me, your biggest lesson is the whole idea of not making people uncomfortable and being comfortable within yourself. So you're going to run around constantly trying to like make everyone comfortable and not be uncomfortable and then beat up on yourself about it later. So mm -hmm. anxiety levels, let me check your anxiety levels, 2.3. It's not that bad, but it goes up in, and it goes up at certain times during the week. Let's take a look at your time frames. Wednesdays and Thursdays, your anxiety levels shoot like rocket sky high. <laughs> Um, yeah. Level energy uh, resistance. So your resistance levels is basically you have to let go of the what people expect of you and get more into a playful nature with you. Let's see what that nature needs to look at. You need to be around animals. You need to be working with animals. You need to see animals. That's what actually calms your um, your energy down. Yeah. Take a look at this. Ah, and you need to be writing as well too because it shows here that you need to be writing. And if you're not writing, you're not you're not processing correctly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so good. Wow. Yeah. So for, sure. for everyone who's not here in the room with us, she was definitely <laughs> struck by this info, was looking at her friend the whole time like, this is so me, right? That's, that's amazing. So working with animals, writing, all good stuff. Wow. Yeah, it'll drop your anxiety, your anxiety levels down to like 0 0.8, which is actually a good basis for you. Because you like a little edge, but just a <laughs> tiny bit of edge. But if it's too much, then you go overboard and then you get like all whacked out and stuff. And of course, you know, because you're the impasse. So you're like sucking everything in and like trying to figure and solve the problem and stuff. It shows you in your files. He's so, saying this to her friend, so, yeah, to so everyone listening. Is, so you're just like, uh... You gotta pull it together. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. You gotta pull this. Here's some things you can do. I got this thing right here. Okay, we're gonna do this. You know, and you're like duh, 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 figuring all these things. And it's great because you have that that part of you that does the due diligence and stuff, but it also becomes frustrating when you see her not make the full change because you actually take it on. So stop taking it on. Realize that you can only show up for people and as the best that you can by giving them the knowledge, the wisdom, and the love. And then from there, you have to kind of let her make her own decision without feeling like it's gonna hurt you because you see her hurting. Okay. Amazing. So I'm just curious, what are my anxiety levels? Oh, let's check. I yeah. feel like <laughs> they're you sky need to come high. In and see me again? We yes. gotta do more. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. Yeah. I did just get back from home. Um, you're actually annoyed. You have annoyance going on inside of your system. It shows right here. There's an annoyance because you have a certain way that you like things to be. And it shows that where you were just, wherever you just were, there was people around you that were like getting under your skin and you weren't processing it again, which is... <laughs> Um, here also, again, um, energy is getting stuck in your lower back, which means that you're not letting go of the energy that you're taking on. We need to work on that. So you're in, let's take a look at your anxiety levels. It's not super high, but it's definitely for you, the way that I operate with you and the shamanic work that we do, it's important to bring those levels down. Right now, it looks like you're at a 1.9, which is like, it's like this. It would be like this. Okay, I feel really good. I don't really feel really good. What is happening to me? I feel really That's good. That's my life. Oh my God, what's going on right now? I don't know what this is. You know, this would be the, the, the reaction that you would give with this thing. That's at this level. exactly how I feel. Yeah. And the annoyance thing that you're talking about is so true. Well, I feel like that happens to me every day, but... I'm sure other people in here can relate as well. To a yeah, degree. Los Angeles, like maybe being in the car on the way here, it was horrible. Next question, come on up. Yeah. I like your Tantra shirt. Do you go there? 
I go there all the time. <laughs> I'm writing a script, co-writing with someone. This person came back in my life from 15 years, and I had a huge crush on them. Not a good situation. It's not? Mm-mm. Oh, God. <laughs> no, it's not a good situation. It, you, you have a tendency of codependency in this relationship, and you tend to baby the situation. You make excuses. Like, so let me tell you what excuse is, what I mean. Something's not bothering you. You paint over it to make it better. Then you paint over it again to make it better. And you paint over it again to make it better. And you want so much to get this stuff done, but you keep looking for someone to come in and, and help you with the project. But the thing is, you have a part of your shadow that's saying, I don't want anyone to help me, which is really interesting about you. So, like, let me just look at something. I'm just going to go through your history. Oh, I'm going to get that out of there. Just get that. Ah, there. Right there. Okay. So this is, again, uh, a lesson for you in the value of yourself, right? And it's the lesson which is, I don't need to chase after anyone. I don't need to put up with energies that I don't want to put up with. I need to be very clear with my boundaries. And I need to be very aware when my energy is being taken on this roller coaster because someone else is in my space making that happen. And then I'm making excuses and saying, it's okay, because look at how much I care. Look at how much I love. Look at what I'm willing to put up with. Let me explain something to you, my love, okay? And I'm gonna get very straight up on it, okay? There is no tolerance for abuse. There is no tolerance for nonsense. There's no tolerance for wasting energy. You understand? Yes, sir. That's it. Okay. Okay? You hold that as the foundation of your being, and you're going to create something completely different. But the first thing you have to get into is this whole thing about, am I good enough? Am I good enough? Am I good enough on my own? And know that you are. I see you. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Next question, Lisa, because you're close. I know you have a question. Yeah, come on up. Uh, love, love the flower pants. We love wonderful Lisa. Student oh, of mine. everyone wonderful listening, students. Lisa's been on the podcast as well. She was episode four, right? Like really close to the beginning. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm always she, wrong on the she's number. She's been training but, with me too. She's been learning. Yeah, she's well, she's amazing. Yeah. So actually, I, thank you, and that's why I'm here because of you, Jordan. Um, one between the podcast, letting me learn about Shaman Dork that way, and then a month ago, actually getting to work with you. Um, and then being here today, it keeps the two of you just keep coming back in my life. <laughs> I love you. But you told me I needed to work on my creative side since I left you last. It's been almost a month. How am I doing? What? <laughs> how am I doing? You don't know how you're doing? Oh, I know how I'm doing. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> what do the ancestors say? <laughs> Your creative side is definitely improving. I think the thing is, it's not putting so much structure around it. You're still adding structure, it shows. And the thing is, releasing that structure, right? And like, just let go. Like, let go and stop planning it. Like, just be in it fully and surrender the little girl inside of you to the full creative process of who you are. That is the last formula for you to complete that energy. And then, great thing is, your um, orgasmic levels are going up higher, which is fantastic. <laughs> you um, have no idea here. what he can do. <laughs> <laughs> which means, which is great, because that also happens with creativity as well. <laughs> I say everyone should, at some time in your life, get a private session oh, with Sean so and Dirk. It is the most incredible experience. Yeah, no, it's, it's like nothing other. I'm very humbled by no, these you're... words of yours. Uh, so, yes. you. so going here, let's take a look. What's up? Blah, 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 blah. I love he calls me out okay. on stuff. Yeah, so here, mm -hmm. it's, um, I really want you to get more into the dance. Okay. Get more into it. Like really let that sensual energy take over you where there's just nothing left but you and that passion. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I love that. I know, he's fantastic. Oh, and thank you, that is so kind. That creative thing has been that podcast of mine that's been on the shelf oh, for I know it's happening this man made it very clear that I have not worked on that side of me so thank yeah. you thank you and I love being with you guys this is wonderful it's an honor to have here. you it's an honor skincare podcast Lisa <laughs> she's a skincare expert everyone in here so very amazing as you can see by her beautiful skin yes <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Kelly. Come on up. Someone who inspires me every single day. 
you're the best. I love you. So my question is, how do you discern between, you know, tapping into your intuition and you want to like listen to that, but your own voice versus that? I I get stuck between the two and sort of like the fear-based side of it, I feel like. Okay. So just right off the bat in your first, um, so the answers are just saying this very clearly. It's not that you get confused. What happens is you second guess it. You go, you have this whole thing where you go, you play devil's advocate with yourself and you've been doing that for quite some time. It's like, it's like a fun little game you play with yourself. You're like, I have the information. No, I don't have the information. (laughs) You're like, I already know what to do. And then it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe that's not it. You know? And the thing is, is that what, it's not about your ability to discern. You have the ability to discern. What it's about is your ability to commit. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commit to what the spirit just brought through you. Commit to that feeling that came through you and stop vacillating to the other side just because you want to play this game of, I don't really want to hold my power. I have it. I'm going to let it go. I have it. I'm going to let it go. I have it. I'm going to let it go to like really honing it in because it's very powerful and you have an amazing sixth sense. You can see things before they happen and you always have since you were a little girl. Looking at your level of astral travel, that's freaking phenomenal. And then here it shows here in your spiritual files that, you're, that the way that you've been operating with yourself is really tearing things down, tearing things down, which is for, for a human to do in that short of time is really unheard of, right? So that you have all of that, but it's also realizing that every time you get to this like idea of being at this place, you convince yourself that you're not there yet when you are. And they know you know because the ancestors are very clear. My grandmother's speaking very clearly about it. And it's like, this is really important for you to, to hone that and say, just, I'm just going to commit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to commit to what I just got, and that's it. And then watch. Okay. You'll see. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jordan. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's so true that you can see things, Kelly, before they happen. She oh, yeah, does, it's, she it's does wild. with me, it's wild. that's for sure. I should be calling her. I know, right? <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Get up here, Megan. For everyone here and listening, Megan and I met on a yoga retreat a couple years, three, four years ago. And ever since we've gone on a yearly trip together. She's amazing. Her heart energy is so beautiful. Yeah, she is amazing. I love her so much. So I have a question. For people that haven't done privates with you, is there something that you, a takeaway that you give them for something that they can work on and practice in their own life? Absolutely. It just depends on what we work on and what the situation is. Everyone varies and everyone, every situation is different. You know, some people come and, you know, they want to learn how to be able to open up their perception to be able to see things that they actually block out, right? So I, like we call it removing the filters, right? So they can actually see the world from a different lens, from mm-hmm. the things that they actually put blinders onto. Some people come in because they want to heal trauma. Some people come in because they want to work on an illness inside. Some people come in because they want to see, you know, all of their power restored to them that was taken away from them from every time they said yes to things they didn't really want to say yes to. So depending upon the situation, I format an information for you. But in the beginning, it's more about you understanding your power. Mm. And then when people continue, I give them like basis of, okay, this is what we need to do and so forth and getting to that space. But for me, my whole thing is I don't believe in this idea of spending your whole life in therapy, you know, because right. I'm, I'm just not into it. It's so boring. It's like rather go to the beach and go do something fun, <laughs> you know? And so the thing is, is that my whole goal is to get you your power very clearly and the mm-hmm. most concise and easy way because my, I always find when I'm traveling the world, I'm meeting with gurus, I'm meeting with other shamans, I'm meeting with people. They make things so difficult. It's like, you know, even the, even meditation teachers, they're like, you have to sit with your back up straight and you have to do this, you have to do that and all these rules. And in shamanism, there's, it's not about rules, right? Mm-hmm. It's about you being able to understand it in the most simplest form. If I'm working with kids, it's the same thing. So what I'm saying to you is that every person is going to be different depending upon what is going to be the easiest for them to learn, right? Because it should be, it should be fun. Every, I mean, I always tell people coming, working, you know, and like, I didn't even change the word working. Let's say embracing things when we're in our shamanic work is fun. We laugh, you know, we cry, we scream, we have intense orgasms, you know, all kinds of things can happen. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, sometimes people's family members come in and they're like, oh, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, sometimes people are like, oh my God, I was flying through a forest and I saw another planet and what was this feeling? It got bounced back in my body. I mean, it depends on the situation, right? So we will set up a system that actually works for you in the most easiest and effortless way that's fun. So you're not really kind of like going into this like, oh, I have to go do that. Because the idea of like, I have to go do something 
in itself just means you shouldn't do it. But the first step for people that are at home is to find and harness that power. The first step is to wait. So what everyone did here today is open up their powers. Now it's up to you. But like for a lot of my recording students who come in, they know who are sitting here in this room, including Jordan, it's up for you to use those powers and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and practice them every day. Make it a part of your daily exercise, right? The more you practice, the more power you get and the more powerful you become. So where, there'll come a time in your life where you'll just whisper a word and things will manifest for you, right? And that's really what I want to get you to is this real um, clear place of your power where you're not having obstacles. You're looking at obstacles and you're laughing at it. You're like, did I really create that one? Let me take that one apart, right? And like realize <laughs> the, the, the truth of what's really happening. So it really depends upon, again, when people are at home, it's about them first realizing that they're powerful. And that first key, the first tool that I would give people um, at home to really begin this path of really coming into shamanism and understanding what shamanism, because shamanism, what I want to do with shamanism is make it a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. And the first key is to basically say to themselves that I don't accept anything that is not coming from love. That's the first key. It's like wipe it right? Anything you were taught, anything you were given, anything that is not coming from unconditional love, wipe it, okay? That's the first. Second is you recognizing that you're powerful. So I do this thing called wording people up. So you word yourself up by saying things like, I love how every time I walk into a room, the room um, fills my energy and it lights up. I love how I'm standing next to someone and I'm doing healing on them. I love that I'm always at the right place on the light time. I love how intelligent I am. I love how my brain is always opening up and expanding to new thoughts, new ideas, new creativities. By wording yourself up, you begin to word other people up. And this is a great way to activate your power because one of the greatest things is as you speak, your soul listens. The soul is the creator. So as you speak, creation creates. So every time you say something, like if you say, I'm creating abundance in my life, and then two two minutes later, you're like, oh God, money is so hard to come by. You just canceled all that out, Mm -hmm. right? So speak with attention on what your power is, not against. I would say, you know what I would say to Jordan? It's like, go for yourself, not against yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Love that question because there will be so many people listening at home. Celeste. And then Carlin, because I see your hand Go every time. Go for yourself, <laughs> not against yourself. Go for yourself, not against yourself. We'll make our I own I song. Add, I just wanted to add that in for so some people at home. Is maybe they get, you know, get them some dancing. Some yeah. Dancing going on. DJ Shaman There direct. you go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. This is magical. I've heard you on Jordan's podcast and so many other podcasts. And just to bring it full circle and have you here is beautiful. So besides the wonderful kind of sphere, force field that you just taught us, what's another way to go into the world with ease? Because life is so beautiful and I find myself sometimes struggling with little teeny difficulties and making them bigger than they are. When I sit back and think about it, life should be easy and just peaceful. So well, strategies. Okay, so there's several things. I mean, you can change your mindset right here, right now. And realize that the reason why you're having these struggles and all of these things is because you don't believe in full, um, complete sustainability of energy, of joy, sustainability of happiness, sustainability of freedom, sustainability of well-being, right? So that's the first thing. Everyone's like, oh, it's easier said than done. No, it's easy said and easy done, right? And so the sustainability of it means that you actually have a belief system in you that says this is a permanent experience. It doesn't need to go away. The reason why human beings make it go away is they've been programmed to believe that it has to go away so then they can go back to it again. So it's kind of like, you know, they're on this kind of wheel that goes around and around and they keep, you know, regenerating it. Now, let's go into you a little bit, my love. Yeah, okay. I please. So the thing is, in order for you to really kind of get out of this space of um, going into these, these moments where you're getting re- um, irritated with things, you have to realize that you have control issues, okay? Definitely. You have major control <laughs> issues, and you're, it's not like so crazy where you can't deal with it and get rid of it, yeah. but you have to realize the reason why is that you don't, you don't like anything having power over you. Definitely. You don't like owing anyone anything. You don't like feeling obligated to anyone. <laughs> so, so, true. so the thing is, because you have these power um, struggles going on, it's not that you have a power struggle with the situation. You have a power struggle with yourself. Yeah. Because one part of your being is like, 
I really don't want to continue having this constant feeling that something is always not right for me or I'm going to end up in a not so good place. Mm -hmm. And because you keep telling your soul that, your soul has to keep creating this issue for you because you keep creating it for yourself, right? And always remember this too, and this is also really good for everyone to know. You know, never say something is down deep inside and never say that um, it's so difficult or so hard to because you're, pro- you're self-programming yourself, right? Mm-hmm. We also remember that your body wants to get rid of every single imbalance that is being created by your lies and by the things you're telling it. But what happens is, is you keep reinforcing it back in. Mm-hmm. So people are like, how come I can't move out of this? How come I'm not getting the love in my life? How come I'm like this? Because you keep reinforcing lies back into your system, mm-hmm. okay? So here's, my, here's, here's something I want you to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Say, um, I want to speak to control. I want to speak to control. Good. Say, control, what do I need you for, really? Control, what do I need you for, really? What's it saying to you? Nothing. Saying nothing? Like, loudly, yes. Right. Yeah. It's saying nothing. Like screaming it. Right. Yeah. So say, why do I hold on to you instead of let you go to the light? Why do I hold on to you instead of let you go to the light? Background is like coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. Um, And say, is this because of the expectations that I placed on myself because I don't want to make a mistake? Is this because of the expectations I placed on myself because I don't (laughs) want to make a mistake? Of course. Of course. And so, how can I make a mistake when I've, this is a planet of refinement? How can I make a mistake when this is a planet of refinement? This isn't the planet of perfection. You can't. That's right. Yeah. See what's happening to your body right now? Isn't that a weird feeling? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? All right. So say, I realize that I'm living on the planet of refinement. I realize that I'm living on the planet of refinement. Which means that I don't really need you to keep creating control so that I don't make mistakes. So I don't really need you creating control so that I don't make mistakes. So I'm taking you into the light. So I'm taking you into the light. To a place of unconditional love. To a place of unconditional love. Say, how do you feel now, spirit? How do you feel now, spirit? Beautiful. And can you see now that you're in the light, um, what you were doing to me when you weren't? So now that you're in the light, can you see what you were doing to me when you weren't? And just like sadness and like tears, yeah. Say, what do you have to say about it? What do you have to say about it? Everything. I don't know. Why that came up? Okay. I don't know. Say, what's your message to me now, now that you're in the light? What's your message to me now, now that you're in the light? It's just love. Yeah. You feel that inside your body? It's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Tell the spirit goodbye. Goodbye. And thank you for the time that you served me. Thank you for the time that you served me. And you're free to go home now. You're free to go home now. That's it. Look at that. What just happened inside. So let's talk for a second about Thrive Market and the chance to get $60 worth of free groceries straight to your door, no strings attached whatsoever from Thrive. I'm always very excited to offer this to you guys because it's literally free groceries straight to your door, no strings attached when you go to thrivemarket.com slash blonde. That is thrivemarket.com slash B-L-O-N-D-E. And there you can shop category by category to get $60 worth of free groceries, free shipping, and a free 30-day trial to Thrive Market's website. So why is Thrive Market special, you ask? Well, let me tell you. So it's very special because it's an online marketplace where you can shop for everything from groceries to home products to body products to pet food for your pet, pet supplies, so many awesome things. And the amazing thing, the reason why you're going to be so beyond interested in this for a couple other reasons as well, is because everything is available on Thrive Market for 25 to 50% less than you would be paying at a regular grocery store. So 
I'm definitely guilty of shopping at places like Erewhon and Whole Foods, etc. But ever since I discovered Thrive Market and realized that a lot of the things that I was buying, I could get for 25 to 50% less, if not more than that, or less than that, I should say, were available on their site. So a couple things that I buy pretty much religiously, and I'm so thrilled about the massive discount that I get, are Eating Evolved Keto Cups. I'm so into them. I definitely don't ascribe to the keto lifestyle now anymore at all. I ascribe very much to the plant-based lifestyle and you can find that on my blog. I just did a whole post about going back to my plant-based way of life. And I'm so happy because since you can shop by category on Thrive, you can search for vegan products, plant-based products, and everything just pops up really easily. So yes, I love these keto cups, even though I'm not keto. But if you are ketogenic, there's amazing things on there for you. You can shop for vegan nut butters. You can shop for coconut oil to cook with. Ghee is something that I use that is one of the only non-vegan things that I'm eating right now. And I love buying my fourth and heart ghee on Thrive. So there's just so many amazing goodies you can find there. I also am getting Hudson's cat food on there. He loves the brand wellness. So if you have a picky cat, try it out. Let me know if they love it as much as he does. So to shop Thrive, head to thrivemarket.com slash blonde, $60 worth of free groceries straight to your door free shipping, and a free 30-day trial to their website. Enjoy, guys. Carlin, question. Hello. Hello, my love. So how do we let go of people from, from our past? I keep feeling like I have, and right before I walked in the building today, a psychic woman ran up to me and told me like, oh, you really, you really need to let go. Can I, can I do a reading on you? And like something did happen earlier today where it brought that thing, that person back in. Mm. So how do we totally remove that? Okay, well, you got to be honest now, okay? <laughs> re- I don't want to be with the person. I know that it's not a good thing. Okay, thank you, conscious mind. We, we love listening to you. <laughs> Always the conscious mind ready to chime in. <laughs> That's not who I want to talk to. I want to talk to your shadow. Okay. Now, tell me the truth, not the lie. See, the conscious mind, yes, we know that you don't want that in and you don't want to have that happen. And, and, you know, we know, we know. And you want to be prosperous and you want love and you want this and want that and whatever. Just go sit over there in the chair and just wait. Okay. Okay? It's the shadow that makes the decisions, not the conscious mind. Okay? Let's get clear. Okay. So I want you to say, the reason why I like bringing this person back in is... Go ahead. The reason why I keep bringing this person back in is excitement. So as long as you want that connection, that's what your shadow just told you. Now you can come back off your chair and, and, and join the conversation. The part of you that said only about a couple minutes ago, no, I don't want something that person. I don't want da 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 yeah, And then your shadow's like, actually, I do, actually. <laughs> It's like really, really good sex also. And See, that's hard to here release. We go. There we go. Good sex. Connection. You ain't letting this go. So if you want to let it go. I do. Well. I know that I need to. No, you don't. That's not true. You can't say that because your shadow doesn't believe that. You can't go against your shadow and make some kind of fairy tale fantasy statement like, I know that I need to. When the shadow is like, sex. Notoriety. It's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> right? So, yeah. yeah, see, you see, you see, you see yeah. what's happening inside right now? Yeah. The truth be spoken. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's happening right now, my love? Yes. What's happening is you're meeting face to face with truth, and the truth will set you free. I love that. You know, even though it's biblical, I love it. It's there's so many beautiful words in the Quran and the, this and that and all over the world. And some things we just need to get rid of. But the thing is, it does set you free. Now you get to make a decision, not based on Chama Dirt giving you some kind of antidote that you're not even gonna follow because the shadow is looking at me like, ah. Uh. I know. I can like You're feel bring it. Else in? It's like You're get out bring of here. Else in to, you oh know, my to, god! To handle this, because Shaman, I don't care what kind of antidote you have. If you're not bringing something in to handle this, 
I'm not going anywhere. She can do all the workshops, yoga classes. You can do all the things she want to do. She knows good and well. She keeps thinking about it. Should I let it go? Should I let it go? She knows what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold on to it because I get something from it. You see? Right. And until you decide to confront me and look at the part of you that feels that you need that to make you whole, then I'm going to continue holding that for you even though your conscious self, which is fluttering over there, saying like, I went out of it, 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 is not listening because that part of your being doesn't have the power. I do. I'm the part of you that you don't accept. So honor me and be honest and know if you want to deal with it, then you need to talk to me and say, hey, I'm willing to look at the insecurity that I'm holding on to that makes me believe that I need to have this in order to deal with this. And when you're ready to do that, I'll be happy to let it go. Now, who do you think is talking through me to talk to you? My shadow. That's right. Can you tell me what the this is? The this is that you don't believe that you have what it takes to be able to do the things that you want to do without having this attachment. And you pride yourself on these superficial things that you've created, no judgment, let's get that judgment, no judgment, of that you think that this is what people want to see. You've created an idea that your value exists in what makes people comfortable with what they want. So if people are happy with what they see, you think that door opens, but you don't realize that you don't need that crutch. You have so much power, you can do it yourself. Now, Thank you very much. Yours. I can lead you to the door, but you have to walk through with it. Which movie is that? I Matrix. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> A boring shaman does nothing for anybody. I can't stand boring spiritual people. They're like, and Chen turn your I'm like, please. Thank you very much. Oh, I love you, honey. You're welcome. I love you too. I love you. We love you so much. So interesting. So many. Okay, right, th- right here. And then Ashley. So tell us your name and then ask us the question. Nicole. Nicole's a student yes. of mine. Um, I guess I have a two-part question. Um, you guess? I, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, Words are power. Um, I feel like I'm like kind of playing whack-a-mole with everything. And like once I squash one thing, another thing comes up and it's manifesting in physical symptoms for me again, which is not pleasant. And I know I need to do something about it. And I feel like I, I'm getting this like push to do something, but I'm not able to like follow through. Okay. So you have what is called, I get more power by being sick than I do by not being sick. Okay. So the syndrome that you're dealing with is called, I'm um, exchange for love for either by being sick, I get these qualities of energies and I, I don't have to deal with what I really came here to do. So I can have an excuse for that because look, I'm sick, you see? So I can't do that because I'm sick. So this is what you're facing off with, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason why it's coming back and forth, like you're doing a dance, like you're doing right. tango, because the one, the part of you that's been training with me is like, damn, I've got power. Like you'll be writing me messages and I'll yeah. be getting your messages <laughs> at night and you'll be like, oh my God, I stepped in this thing and my mom is doing this and da, 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 da. You know, because our family is working with me. And like the thing is, but you, my love, okay, you get to a point where you're like, oh my God, wow, oh, that's really big. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay, do something quickly. Do something quickly, Shadow, do something quickly. Oh God, I'm sick again. Oh, oh God, I'm feeling it in my body. Oh, no, no. I don't know if I can do this. That's because you're afraid of the, what you think is the future. Now, let me explain something to you, okay? So I had this guy... Um, he's a doctor and his mo- the mother is a dentist and they sent their son to Harvard. He comes home and he calls me up and he says, you know, Dirk, he was talking to me. We were out at lunch one day and he said, uh, Shaman Dirk, I really feel like something's wrong with my son. I said, why is that? He said, because my son went to a good school, you know, good grades, everything like, and he's sitting at home watching Storage Wars on our couch and me and my wife wake up every morning and he's just sitting there potato chipping on the couch And I really like, I want to get him a psychologist. I don't know what to do. And I thought, you know, well, you know, since me and my wife work with you, can you come to the house and work with my son? I said, okay, because he's lazy. He's lazy. I can't even believe how lazy he is. This is what the father said to me. So I go to their house and I sit down and he's on the couch. He's like, yeah, my dad thinks I'm lazy. I know why you're here. Oh, you're not lazy. 
you're not, you're not lazy at all, actually. He goes, no, no, that's not, I am lazy. I go, oh, no, 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 that's what your dad tells you, so you're just believing it. I go, you're not lazy at all. In fact, I said, you have so much power and energy inside of you. The reason why you're on this couch is not because you're lazy. It's because when you think of the future, you don't see open arms inviting you to success having wonderful experiences with you where you get to go and meet with amazing people and share your ideas and great things are going to happen. No, you see a dragon waiting to burn you alive. People coming out of the forest and cut you up and all kinds of crazy nightmares in front of your path. You're looking at your path and going, ah, uh, yeah, oh, God, I got to watch storage wars. I got to eat some potato chips. This is what you're doing. And he was like, oh my goodness, you're right. The reason why I haven't moved forward because I keep thinking all, I keep creating all these fantasies in my head of all the things that are the most negative thinking of what I think is going to happen if I go out there and like go make my life. I said, yeah. So our focus is to bring you to the place of thinking in the highest level so that that energy like propels you, right? To move in that path and you get to manifest all the things you need for your happiness. Now, Sound familiar? A little. <laughs> a little? I don't know if it's a little. Sounds like a lot. But <laughs> yeah. You see, the thing is, stop using illness as a way to get love. Get love by being happy and successful and living your truth and being in the dream that you want. Or should I say want? Let's remove want. Everyone at home, don't use the word want. Need. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to shift everything. Then you won't be playing this, this, this tango game of I'm sick, I'm not sick, I'm sick, I'm not like, you know, pulling the flowers every morning. I'm sick, I'm not sick, I'm sick, I'm not sick. No, you won't be. There'll be no need for you to. Okay? Mm -hmm. You got it? Yeah. All right. I'm waiting for that email. <laughs> Can I ask the second question real yeah. quick? Okay, so my second question, I guess, is… Um, I, I guess. Um, is that I had to hit rock bottom to even like start to evolve. Is that kind of what's necessary that's necessary in my path was just because you're stubborn okay. you have stubbornness you always have since you were yeah. a little girl like it takes someone it, it takes someone to whop you over the head in order to get you but do you have to use a whop over the head to motivate you i mean you're not the only one look at america you look at you need like twin towers to fall down before yeah. they opened up a yoga studio in new york <laughs> and they had like a mindful center and juice bars on the corner mm -hmm. i remember in new york before the twin towers and there was nothing like that i had to search for my juice it was like a mission. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Mindfulness centers, like meditation on the, on, on the go. Yeah, right. Please, people were sneaking me in their back house because they didn't want their husband to know they were seeing a shaman. Okay. Soon as the Twin Towers fell, uh, the husbands were calling me. I know you've been seeing my wife and I really need your help. Okay. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying to yeah. you? Is that... It's based on how you're choosing to believe in your evolution. If you believe that evolution moves you by pain, then you'll keep staying on the wheel of pain and keep, keep creating pain to evolve you. Why can't you do it through pleasure? I mean, you can do it through orgasms. You can do it through like happiness and laughter. I mean, like I know there's a guy, I was at this dinner in Italy and he was like, I went to India and I got this stomach flu and I climbed this thing. That's why his fingers messed up because I got frostbite in the mountains. And I was like, he was telling me all this stuff. And I was just sitting on the table, just looking at him with dread. I was like, <laughs> and he's like, but you know, he's like, you know what, Shaman Derek? And he's telling him on the dinner table, I have gained so much spiritual enlightenment. And I'm telling you, in order to get it, you got to go to these places. You got to go to India. You got to go to the top of these mountains where the ice is. And you got to be in these places. I go, really? Because I would do it just by taking a shower. <laughs> okay, I would turn that water on and I'd just be like, oh, really? Wow. Because he chooses to make it. He, he, he has created in his mind that he's not spiritual unless he does this, 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 this. People do that all the time. I'm not, I, I can't meet the person I'm with until I lose the weight, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I can't be, have money until I do this, do this, do this. It's like you're punching a, a punch card. You know, like I have to pay, I have to pay the piper for my happiness. I have to pay the piper to evolve. I have to pay the piper to have love. So you're, you're constantly paying for what? You could just have it if you want it, but you're playing a game. So he says, oh yeah, I went to all these people. So he feels like, yeah, I almost lost a finger and I had threw up for like six months and barely died. I was, in, <laughs> I was, 
I'm like, well, if you feel like you needed to throw up and lose a finger and all that, and that's what brought you enlightenment, enjoy that. But you don't have to do that. And see, our world has programmed us incorrectly because we have this false way of looking at things because we're taught, we're put through a, a false institution called school. Mm -hmm. Let me just give it up for that. <laughs> Where's my class? <laughs> okay. This, this institution had no, nothing, had no plan on getting to know you. It had no plan on wanting to understand how you operate as a human being. It only had one plan. Do you follow the rules and do you take the test that we create? And who created these tests, by the way? I was like, what, where did this test come from? He's just like, you just need to take the test and quiet because you're, upset, you're upsetting the class. I'm like, but where did it come from? Who came up with these questions? Why am I answering these questions? You know, it's weird. It weirded me out for a little bit. I had to get out of there quickly. I don't understand what they were trying to do. I was like, what is this? This is weird. What is this institution? It's weird. Why? Because it makes you believe that your only value is antiquated on what you can produce, what you have, and how smart you are or how good you are is according to consensus of society. Now that's even screwed. So the thing is, is that all of that is robbing you from your truth. So you will believe that in order to do something, you have to work hard for it. You know, I mean, I have this friend who is in L.A. here and we would go to he'd have these parties in his house and he's had a beautiful house and cars and all this great whatever. And we a bunch of friends would make bets. We'd make these little bets at his parties to see how many times he's going to tell everyone how hard he worked for his stuff. So we'd be like going around and people were like, oh my God, I love your Ferrari. Like, do you know how hard I had to work for that? <laughs> like, oh my God, your art is so amazing. Yeah, I worked really hard for this. I worked really hard for that art. I'm like, dude, like we got it. Great. And that's why you don't even enjoy any of it because you work so hard for it. You're still working hard for it because that's, that's your mentality. You think the only way you can enjoy success and happiness and, and prosperity and abundance and all these things is that if you burn yourself out. That's not fun. No. Right? So what's missing from your equation? Um. F-U-N. <laughs> I just gave it to you. Didn't you see? Don't worry. You don't have to take a test with me. Perfect. So the point I'm saying is... <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so the point I'm saying is, is that you have to know you, right? Knowing you is not knowing you through your friend or knowing you through whatever your social system says, right? It's knowing you, right? To thy own self be true. So by knowing you, you are opening up a wellspring of amazingness that comes to your being. And you're not going to be creating all of these, uh, I need to get pain in order to grow. You're going to be like, it's fun to grow. Every time I grow, I have an orgasm. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Right? Yeah, no, you can orgasm yourself into, like, into enlightenment. I kid you not. I, <laughs> and some of my students know here when I put the laughing bug on them, when we do the laughing stuff in their, in their treatments, they laugh for a whole hour. They're enlightenment all over the place. They'll be laughing at everybody. They're laughing at how serious we take things as human beings, laughing how dramatic species we are. We can laugh all the way to enlightenment. You know, laughter is the greatest enlightenment. Do you know every time you laugh at something, it just it gives you all the truth. You get all the truth. So the thing is, is like, do you want it like that? It's, it's the whole consciousness of, of evolution too. Do we need to keep evolving by putting Trumps in office and like constantly creating like all these problems in the world? Is that like that? That's what moves us. Like that's what made like right now this whole movement in LA right now. Like I, I usually come to LA for like one month and I'm out. I'm like, okay, back to like going out there in the field and doing my thing. I got here to LA this time and I was like, what is this wave that I'm feeling moving through the energy waves? There's something awakening here. There's an activated energy here. Something has shifted. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know it shifted. Trump. Trump is in there stirring the pot to, to bring shifts. And yes, it's not the greatest thing. You don't want Trump in office. But like we have, sometimes the darkness has to show up because human beings are stubborn. You're like, I told my friends, like, go to yoga. Go do this. Go do that. They're like, no, I'm not into that. I'm not into it. Mm -mm, don't do it. I'm not into it. It's not for me. You know, Shaman, I get it. I love you. And we have some other great things in common. But that's not for me. As soon as the Twin Towers fell, they're like, so where's the yoga center? And uh, how do I do this? Because they're in pain. They're like, oh, 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 oh. Do you have to do that in order to evolve? No. All right. So are you, are you shifting that right now? Yes. How good does that feel to shift that right now? Really good. It's amazing that information that's moving through your modus operandi right now. Do you feel good? I don't know what that is, but yeah. That's the way you think. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? That's your thinking. <laughs> right? So it feels good, right? Yeah. And you feel that energy moving on your body? Yes. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> That was powerful. Okay, so we have time for about one more question. And let's, can we go over a little, Allo people? For just a couple minutes, not to put you on the spot completely. Um, She's like, everybody for, out right now, get just, out right just now. Just a She's couple. Pull the fire alarm. She's like, eh. We'll just go on for like <laughs> 10 minutes and we can definitely help. And if people have to leave, you, of course, you guys can feel free to gracefully exit. Um, Ashley, I come on. I saw, I saw your arm, and then we'll do you right up front, and then we'll see if we have time for more. This is just too amazing. So many great questions. Oh, thank you. It's very humbling, but this is just service and love. So well, it is. I love it because I think everybody listening, I feel like everyone who's here asking the questions that they're asking will resonate so deeply with everyone who's listening and. Every single question has re resonated with me so deeply. So I know there's such a reason for all of it. I so Ashley, I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> I love her too. <laughs> I love you. 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 <laughs> um, okay. Why am I up here? Um, <laughs> That's a good all one. I, I Let's start there. <laughs> 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 I mean, we can. I can help guide you a little bit, but you probably don't need that. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing because um, one of the things that you've actually come on this planet to do is really understand conflict and what's happening on the planet and the whole conflict situation. And so a lot of the questions you have is really about the things that are happening and going on because you're feeling it. You've always felt it. And the thing is, is about really bringing that equilibrium and peace where you're not being using your empathic energies incorrectly because that's been an up and down thing for you is to not take that stuff in and really like realize like if someone is walking off a cliff and you say stop and they're going to keep walking off the cliff, they're going to walk off the cliff and you have to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Right? I understand that. I think I, I am somebody that can see or I feel as though I see like 10 steps ahead in most situations. Yeah, you're a visionary. Yeah, I think I, I get caught up like for me because I feel like I can see where Jordan's at. I can see where my friends are going, like their businesses are going. Like I feel very strongly I'm here as a purpose to use like my knowledge and visual communication to be able to take like such people and find ways for us to essentially like heal the world or just better other people's lives through, you know, visual communication. That's what I do. But, Wait, hold on a second. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, right. It says here that you're putting out energy for everyone around you and doing all of these things, but there's still a, a, this lack of satisfaction inside of yourself because you're not, again, and this goes back to your empathic energy, and this goes back into not allowing your vessel to be filled. So yeah. you're not filling your vessel. You're draining it. Okay? Yeah. Now, let me explain to you how that's affecting you. Okay, so you're creating inflammation in your body right off the thing, going in your lower abdominal area. It looks like your intestinal tract here. I have celiac disease. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's in and my small intestine for everybody listening. Yeah, it's in this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's in the intestine. Uh, okay, and you have aggravated um, emotions, which means that your emotions are attacking you from inside. So what's happening is there's no rest. There's no rest going on inside of you. Your body is accumulating fat cells because of it, because it feels under shock and pressure. You're holding um, imbalances in your lower um, sacrum, in your lower part of your lower spine. You have to let go of dysfunctional, toxic energies, okay? You cannot hold energy for people. Mm. When, you see, when you're working with people and you're doing things, you can see the vision, but here's what's happening. As a visionary, you're looking at the vision and, and the ancestors are showing me, and it's beautiful, the things that you see, the possibility of. However, you're getting stuck in the possibility of so that when you return to this reality, it doesn't sit well with you. And so what ends up happening is, and you're not even honoring the ET nature in you because you do have ET nature. You're still looking at humanity like, what the hell? And um, you still haven't made full integration. So that means that the ET spirit that has joined with this body to assist you in your ability to use information as a visual as an, uh, and be able to share knowledge in a way that actually supports the system isn't fully invested. And the reason why is because it still has judgment about the human race. 
And so what you try to do is mask that judgment and then feel bad about it because you know it's there. So then you people please. So that's people please, people please, people please, people please, people please. I don't like people pleasing. And now I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. And then you people please again. This is not serving you because what it does is it depletes, 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 depletes. Mm-hmm. Now, going in. One second. I just want to talk to your little girl. Um, council members, pull the holographic image of her little girl, please, into the room. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what is it she's not doing for you? The little girl's mentioning music, by the way. <laughs> um, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, she says that uh, she has musical gifts and talents and you don't let her explore them. You stop them. You limit her from allowing herself to be playful in, in the expression because you're making things harder than they have to be. Go ahead. Tell me more, little girl, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says she wants to spend more time in nature. Sometimes city is too much for her. She sent you messages over and over and over that it's not okay and you keep doing it and doing it. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Really? Okay. She says also choosing relationships as the need to like, it's like a form of hostage. It's like putting someone in hostage by, keep, by doing everything you can for them, but not receiving anything in return is really not supportive because all it does is it makes you feel like, look, are you, it's like, it's kind of like holding someone hostage. I'm feeding you pie. I'm feeding you this. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing that for you. Da, 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 but you can't leave because look at all that I did for you. And your little girl's like, please leave. Please leave so we can have some time alone. She needs time with you. Uh, go ahead. Mm, she wants to do big world stuff. She's about worldly stuff, but she said she can't open that door because you are not taking care of her in the way that she needs to be taken care of. She needs you to ask her every day, three times a day, what do you need right now to feel loved? Am I supposed to answer this? Sometimes uh, answer is not necessary. Sometimes it's just a smile, a <laughs> wink, a kiss. <laughs> All I know is I need like peace, peace, rest, distance. Yeah, she a really lot told of the you similar. That. That's what she said. Exact, yeah. Yeah, you need. If you want to really know what you need, you need to go somewhere in nature. Okay, you need to go there and 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 sleep for like a week. Exactly. Okay, you need to wake up out of that sleep. And you need to sit down and draw some serious boundaries of what, and boundaries not like, oh, you're irritating me, but boundaries in the sense of I can only do so much and my natural signature is to make me more important than the situation. And once you do that, because there's a selfish part inside that doesn't like, there's a part of judgment inside about selfishness that comes over to you because that's your stuff from your childhood. Let it go. Remember, selfish is the new self-love. I've said it. (laughs) I'll say it again. Selfish is the new self-love, okay? If you cannot fill up your vessel in your tank and you think because you run around doing all these things for everyone that everyone's going to fill you up, even they can't even anyway because you don't let them. So that is really not going to support you on this journey. You have to step into this place of complete disconnect for one week, I, my, 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 um, my uh, thing for you is to go sleep for one week and let's talk again. That's it. Right now, okay. I, there's nothing else to be said. One week. Okay. I, I would love to sleep for one week <laughs> with my it. cat and yeah. Go yeah. do it. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, totally. That's it. Just That's do me. it. There's, yeah. like, there's nothing else to be said until you do it. Your little girl says there's nothing else to be said until you do it. She needs you. Okay, And the energy that you're putting into everyone else should be going to her, filling her up so she can be able to have the overflow of what you're giving to her go out to the people. You're draining the tank. It's like dumping out this water and then someone comes and goes, can I have some water? And you're like, um... I only got a couple drops for myself. You're like, okay, I still you're give it. it. Yeah. I know, and you give it. You saw what I was going to do? Yeah. I said, oh, you can have it. Yeah. You're the woman with the well that's dry and everyone in the place is making soup mm-hmm. with your water. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's time for restructuring mm-hmm. of selfish self-love. What's it time for? Uh, restructuring of selfish, of selfish self-love. self-love. I love you, baby. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. Love you, Jordan. Yeah, that was definitely so accurate. Knowing Ashley very well, and everyone who knows Ashley very well in this room agrees. She's, she's always giving to other people and it's time for her to go sleep in the forest somewhere. <laughs> But don't Next sleep for question? 30 years. <laughs> no, maybe for a week would be perfect. Tell us your name. My name is Bree. And 
You said earlier that there's no closed eyes in shamanism. And that really struck me because I feel like I'm always meditating yoga or just sitting at my desk. It's like the only way I can shut all of this off. The only way. Because out of all the <laughs> thousand billion other ways, that's the only one you chose? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know why you do that? Because you've created a program, a belief that says that you can't connect unless you shut out. Right? But in shamanism, the way that we teach or the way that I teach my students is that if they meditate in quiet, I tell them to go meditate at a concert. Mm -hmm. Go meditate at the most noisiest, most loud, most uncomfortable place. And if you can't hold your place there, then you need to keep doing it until you can. Lean into your aversions. Lean into the thing that actually you feel is difficult for you. So if opening your eyes is difficult, then keep them open and practice your, 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 <laughs> your practices in that way. And what's going to happen is you're going to strengthen. Like if someone comes to me and says, I'm really good visionary, but they're not good at hearing spirits talk to them, I train them to focus more on hearing the spirits talk to them because we already know they know how to see, right? Or if they're a feeler and they feel everything, but they can't see, we focus on getting them to see, right? Taking the, the, those, those weak spots and making them strong is the, is the fundamental principles of shamanism. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's, I feel like I close my eyes because that's, I, everything is internal. Like I can feel it all and I can be there. But as soon as I start bringing in the outside world, it's like overwhelming. No, it's not overwhelming. You just decided that it's overwhelming. You're not <laughs> utilizing your power. You're utilizing your power to say, well, this is the only way I can do it. And so therefore, your, your, your being is like, okay, fine, let's do it like that. Remember, your ego's job is to do one thing. Honor the creator. If you say life is hard, the ego will make sure you have examples of life being hard so you get to be right. If someone comes in and says life is easy, your ego will battle them in a big showdown of like, you don't know what you're talking about. And let me tell you all the things that I've been through and the pain that I've gone through <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. Your ego is not, and people say, oh, I got to kill the ego. Good luck on that one. Your ego is not meant to be killed. It's there to edify and identify you in your truth. And so you can align your ego to love. You can align your ego to understanding the truth and principles of surrender. You can align your ego to humbleness and humility. You can align your ego into service and to reverence. You can align your ego to these things and your ego will then create that for you. You see, like when women say, oh, men are hard to come by, the ego's like, okay, that's fine. I'll make sure I send all the men that are hard to come by <laughs> into your life so you can be right and you can sleep well at night. At your wish, God, everything you wish, you will get. So the ego's job is to make sure you get it. I call it the great paperweight. It's like its job is to make sure you stay in this body because if you ask to be here, so it's here to make sure you stay in the body. So that's what the ego's here to do, right? So what you're doing right now is you're programmed your ego to support this lie that you tell yourself, which is the only time that I can actually get into this place is if I go into myself. <laughs> all sounds and all energies are now blocked out. Yeah, right. <laughs> You do have a subtle energy. Well, when energy. you look like that and you do it like that, it makes me feel really silly. Well, no, it's kind of going inside. <laughs> I'm not trying to show like an example of going inside, but from a comedy point, you know, because you got to make fun of these things. But the uh -huh. thing is that the, really, the reality of it is you're never really separating because you have what is called a subtle energy field. You have an electromagnetic energy field that is connecting to every single thing in your environment and it's picking it up on it. It's just you choose to believe that this is the way you connect and you go in. So it's your crutch which means that in, in our training and our continued work that we will do, I will push you beyond that place with love, of course, and, and laughter. And, and so that you can see the power that you're able to, to bring forth by keeping your eyes open. A good technique would be what I used to train, what I used to teach like uh, women who are witches. And remember, witches isn't about like black magic or anything. It's a woman who knows who the fuck she is, okay? So let's get, it, like let's get, it, let's get it real. Right? A woman who's not afraid of her power, okay? Let's get it real. People were burning you at the stakes because they were scared. They're scared, okay? <laughs> so what I do, and I, I used to have a coven, and I used to tra train a bunch of women, and I used to have them put a candle right in front of them, and I'd have them stare at the candle and keep and make a note. When their eyes would divert the candle, they write it down, and they do it again until they can get up to two hours, one hour, three hours, four hours, where they, can, they stay so focused on that without diverting, and that gives them the same focus in every other thing in their life. Practice it. It's a good technique. So I can become a witch. How do you know you're not ready one? <laughs> become a witch, please. I don't know how you're going. Yay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's be real now. We try to hide. Nobody's going to get you. Just practice. 
And you'll see, you'll be like, wow, this is amazing. Because when you stare at that candle, when you get like, I have students who get up to like, they'll call me up, I got 45 minutes, my eyes didn't divert and I didn't have one thought in my head other than that candle. That's how powerful they are at manifesting. manifesting. That's how powerful they are at doing healing work. That's how powerful they are at connecting with with the other beings and spirits. It's a direct laser. It's like, okay? Nothing can stop you. Nothing gets in your way, okay? I meditate at concerts. It'd be like Guns N' Roses. Well, maybe not Guns N' Roses, something else, because I would be like, yeah. But the (laughs) truth of the matter would be told, like a hip-hop concert or something that I'm not really that interested in. But like, I'd be like sitting there and just like meditating. And just, and like not letting it affect me. My friends, I can't believe you sat there for a whole two hours in like full meditation. Or I'd be like at a rave with house music, be like, dong, 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 dong. I'd be like. (laughs) My friends like, what are you doing? I'm like practicing, strengthening, (laughs) increasing my will. You can do it. I believe in you. (laughs) Do you believe you can do it? Yes. You going to do it? Yes. It's going to be fun, right? Yes. How exciting is that going to be, huh? Uh-huh. Get a little timer and be like, okay, I did it for like one minute. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it might be like 30 seconds the first round. We'll see. <laughs> I'm giving you one minute. Let's go with the one minute. It's going to be 30 okay. seconds. Okay. All right. And then next time you'll be like, oh my God, it's been 10 minutes. Oh my God, it's been 20. And before you know it, you'll be able to do it for five hours. You'll be able to move mountains with your thoughts. You'll be able to dismantle <laughs> obstacles in front of you. You'll just sit in a chair and be like, oh, there's an obstacle. And you just focus against the obstacle and all of a sudden you get a phone call to be a different situation. I kid you not. It's quite amazing. It's really fun to do. You get to work within the energy planes of thought. It is nothing best than brilliant to see your powers shown in the world by how you use your mind. The will must be strengthened. Remember that. That is the shamanic way. You can't live around. We can't have like a, a will that can be thwarted by some sound of a horn or a sound of a fire engine truck. Please, I get a fire engine truck. I love it. Give it to me. Keep that thing on. Turn it on. I'm like... <laughs> okay, just do it. It's nice you, you say that because I live literally across the street from a fire department. Oh, I so why. I'm going to use this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, oh, no. <laughs> no, you got to go in it. You got to get in there. <laughs> Uh Okay, it's so much fun. So much fun. (laughs) Okay? Okay. So good. Okay, so we'll have to end on that note because it is coming to a close here. Alice is probably closing soon. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here. You guys are so awesome. This was so special. I always believe the people who show up to be in a room together are here for a reason. So... You're all special, all magical. Powerful. Powerful. Geniuses. Creative. Witches. Innovative. Witches. Witches. I'm going to gonna say, stare like, at a guy candle. Was, did he leave already? The guy who was here? I wish you had a clap oh, for him. Man. I mean, do you I see? I know, he's the best. I, I want you to see yes. because I really, I, I, had this, I had this whole conversation recently, which was all about the fact that like, you know, everyone always is like, okay, why are you a man and why are you fighting for women's rights and like, why are you doing women empowerment? Well, here's the thing. So people need to understand and know. Um, In a lot of my other lifetimes that I existed, I was a female who went through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering under the hands of men, under systems and so forth. So when I chose to incarnate back on earth, I I looked at all the different quantum choices that I could make about coming back here. And I saw myself, I've had only two lives as a man, which was one in Egypt as Amun Ra and the other one was as a... um, a king in Persia who, that's why I go to a lot of Muslim countries because I created a lot of that mess. But it's, but the point I'm making is this, is that a lot of my lives were female and, you know, growing up in a house with a father who was very misogynist, male chauvinist, like, you know, constantly putting my sister down, constantly making her feel like she didn't matter. It was like such an eye opener because when I chose this body, I chose to be a male because I knew that if I came a female and I was going to go talk to men about understanding the power of women, they'd be trying to get in my pants. Or they'd be trying to like, you know, they're not listening to me. They're like, oh yeah, huh, 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 okay, yeah, huh. But if I come as a man with a female spirit who talks to these men, I know exactly what's, how to get to them and get them to see. And when I talk to women and I tell them, and this is what the men are up to, right? And so I'm able to bring both sides of that energy. And so for me, I just want to acknowledge all of you here, okay? I mean, it, it's just, I don't want to start crying, but it, it brings great honor 
to, 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 to my heart, to the spirits, to the universe that you chose to be here at this time in your evolution. And I know, I know it has not been easy for you. The system was not put in place to support you and to be able to lift you in the way that you needed to be lifted. And I want you to know that you are my heroes. You are the heroes that I look towards to see that you will put this world back in its right place. And then, you know, the, 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 the level of our evolution requires it. We cannot see, men cannot see the quantum levels of danger and all the things, but you can, and you can navigate us out of the darkness and into the light. And I am so honored that you chose to be here on this planet with me. So thank you. Thank you guys for listening to this live episode with Shaman Durek and with so many of you who came out to our event, who asked questions. Thank you for putting yourself out there and asking such deeply personal and beautiful questions so that all of us listening at home can listen to the answer, apply it to our own life and see what resonates. Thank you to Shaman Durek for sharing your magic with us today. And always thank you to Aloe Yoga at The Grove for providing our beautiful space. Thank you to so many of my friends who were there. Brittany and Tara from Elevate the Globe, Celeste from The True Spoon, Ashley Straff, my photographer, Kelly Tennant, my dear friend from Orange Theory, who I have more similarities with than I could even begin to talk about in this outro. Carlin Bryan, my sorority little sister. Lisa Hyde, who has been a guest on this podcast, skincare expert, and so many other people who were there who truly mean the world to me and to this show, because without the support, we wouldn't have much of a show, would we? So everyone else who came, all the listeners of the podcast, all of our readers, Shaman Durek fans, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are so appreciative that you made our night a possibility. And then we got to record it and share with all of you. So I wanted to remind you that if you feel inspired, feel called to rate and review the podcast, I would love to have you do that in iTunes and send me a screenshot of your rating and review and subscription if you choose to subscribe. And I will send you my blogging tips and tricks document that I send to everyone who takes time out of their precious day to rate and review the podcast. I know it's a bit of a process. It's actually pretty easy, but anything is a process these days. So anyone who takes the time to do it, I'm so appreciative, so grateful, and always want to take the time to thank you and send you something special. So thank you beyond beyond for being here. Join our Soul on Fire podcast tribe where we keep the conversation going all week long. Would love to have you there. That's on Facebook. And thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know the structure was different because of the live and only having two microphones and all that jazz, but I think it was really, really fun, something different. And I'm grateful for the whole experience. Talk to you guys next week. Have an amazing day.